The first award to be presented this evening is the Viola R. McMillan Award. And the Viola R. McMillan Award is named in honor of PDAC's longest serving president. I think it was 20 years. And it's given to a person or company demonstrating leadership in management and financing for the exploration and development of mineral resources. And today, tonight, we recognize John McConnell and the Victoria Gold team for innovative financing of the Eagle Gold development and production in Yukon. And, and here's their story. John McConnell and the Victoria Gold team were looking to open the Eagle Gold mine in the Yukon and set out to secure financing but no one could have predicted the perfect storm they'd be up against. In 2018, a downturn in the global economy had investors keeping a tight hold on their funds. The financial climate when we uh, first wanted to raise money to build Eagle was difficult. Canadian banks weren't interested in talking to us and capital markets wouldn't support uh, a big equity raise. So. We had to look at alternatives. It also proved challenging having to sell investors on a mine located in the Yukon, Canada's north, in a challenging and harsh Arctic climate. People were skeptical about heap leaching in Canada's Arctic. There were a lot of people concerned that in an Arctic environment, everything would freeze up. John knew it would take persuasiveness, tenacity, and more than a little creativity. I think the whole thing was unique. It was done with non-traditional lenders and non-traditional equity holders. In the end, the financing was with Osisco Royalties. We sold them uh, an NSR, plus they participated in an equity financing. And then Orion Mine Finance put forward a debt package, plus they participated in the equity. While the financing didn't follow a traditional path, with persistence and John's innovative take, the funds were in place and the Eagle Gold Mine was a go. The pandemic, however, had other plans. COVID started just as we were beginning the Eagle operations. And, uh, you know, one of my biggest concerns was government would shut down mining operations in the Yukon. We were at the maximum debt and shutting the mining operation down would have been devastating. With the threat of operations coming to a grinding halt, roughly six to 700 employees and contractors would potentially be out of work. Roughly 40% of our employees are based in the Yukon, so it would have had a big impact on the Yukon economy. We made a lot of changes logistically because airlines essentially shut down, so we had to go to charters rather than commercial. During the pandemic, we went to four weeks in and four weeks out. Resourcefulness, a little imagination, and the drive to see the financing take place resulted in great value for stakeholders in the Yukon and Canada. John knows firsthand just how important a mine can be to a community. I grew up in a mining town. My dad was a mine electrician. Certainly my brother and I uh, had a wonderful childhood. I love my job and, you know, I've always said that if at the end of the week I can't point to something new that I've learned, then it's probably time to look for a different job. John knows enough about financing mines, as he says, to get himself in trouble. But he also has the good sense to surround himself with a great team. It says John McConnell and the Victoria team at I just think of us as one team. I don't think there's any magic to John McConnell. The Prospectors and Developers Association proudly bestows the 2024 Viola R. McMillan Award for innovative financing of the Eagle Gold Mine development in the Yukon to John McConnell and the Victoria Gold Team. It's my, my privilege to present the PDAC 2024 Viola R. McMillan Award in, 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 in uh, development to John McConnell and the Victoria Gold Team. John, please come forward to accept the award. <music>
Now they told me I have three minutes, so I'm gonna make this quick, but you know, my dad was a mine electrician, but he was a toastmaster, and so he always said you gotta start a speech with a joke. So I have a 10 year old, and most of my jokes are father-daughter jokes. So a fellow has two cats. One is named one, two, three. The other is named un, deux, trois. He decides one day to have a, a swimming race for the cats across his pool. So he throws both cats in and runs to the other side and calls them. They start paddling across. Which cat won? Un, deux, trois, sank. Anyway, I, uh, you know, we've got a few of our team here, and uh, as the video said, I think our, our financing was a bit unique, and uh, got a few people I should thank. Uh, you know, uh, the Osisco guys are somewhere around. I know Sean Rusin's here. Um, Sean Rusin and I go a long way back and uh, you know I knew him when he was a diamond driller and I was a miner so uh, you know once we convinced him that was a big step and then he actually brought Orion along and Orion was a pain in the ass they spent about a year doing due diligence but uh, we got there with them as well. Um, we did have some help on the advisory side, and uh, with me tonight are two fellows from Oramet, uh, Jim Veraster, the president, he takes all the credit, but the guy that did all the work was Mark Rice. <laughs> and then on my team, as I said, it is a team, and uh, you know, I'm a miner, I, uh, you know, often would sit in meetings and I had no idea what people were talking about, but you know, a fellow that our chief financial officer, Marty Rendell, I would sit in these meetings and uh, I got great comfort because he was usually the smartest guy in the room. So uh, thank you, Marty. Then the other guy that uh, we relied on a lot was uh, Mark Caranto, our chief operating officer. Mark was the guy that actually convinced me that uh, Eagle was a mine and we could make keep leaching work in the Arctic. Thank you, Mark. And then the uh, grand mentor of all of us is a fellow that named Sean Harvey, right out there. Sean is the chairman of Victoria, and uh, Sean and I joined the board of Victoria in 2007, and uh, we didn't know each other at the time, but uh, he's a capital markets and finance guy, and I'm a technical guy, and we've made a pretty good combination over the years, and you know, we've become friends, and uh, you know, he was the best man at my wedding a few years ago. So, uh, you know, some good relationships come out of this business. Let me see, I'm looking around here. Oh, last, or well, no, not last but not least, but I uh, should also point out the uh, support we get from the Yukon government. And I'd like to thank the uh, Premier Ranch Palais. I'd say honorable, but I know he's not that honorable. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, Ranj. You've been a great supporter of the mine over the years, and it's uh, special to have uh, the Premier join us here tonight. Now I'll get to the last but not least, my lovely wife, Tara Christie. Um, I couldn't have got through uh, all of this without her. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. <laughs>